Do you want to write blog that most of the people would like to read? If yes, then this video is for you. If no, you can still hang around and watch till the end. Who knows, it might change your mind. Hey, this is Tapas. Welcome to your channel Tapas Script where you learn things fundamentally and conceptually. Today's topic is not technical one. It's about blogging. A little bit technical stuff with that because it's about technical blogging. But before we get started, I would like to talk about myself being a blogger. It's not about boasting about my blogging journey. Rather, it's about boosting your confidence on the fact that I'll be sharing in this video. In the last three and a half years, I have written about 250 plus articles on my blog greedroots.info and this blog is hosted on Hashnode on dev.to writing for several years now. Also the amazing place like Freecode Camp where I was mentioned at the top contributor for consecutive three years. Apart from that, I've been writing for a lot of paid gigs. By the way, the next video that I'm going to create on the content creation will be about how to get paid gigs through blogging. So if you don't want to miss that, please subscribe to this channel so that you get those content very, very easily. All right, so that's about me, my blogging. But this video is not about my blogging. It was just to set the context that I have some experience to talk about this topic. Now let's get into the topic, but I want to make sure that you understand that what we're going to do. We are going to break this thing into three phases. The three phases will be things that you want to care, things that you want to know, and things that you want to do about your technical blogging. So the first is the things that you want to care. So if you don't care about your article, your blog, why should somebody else care? And for them to care, you have to make sure that your article is always upfront and visible. How do you make your article visible? One of the key factors for making your article visible is the cover image and the title. So make sure you create a cover image for your article that is relevant to your article topic. Here is an example. I am writing an article on full stack, full stack engineering. Maybe very soon I'll be publishing this. So if you read the article title is talking about full stack or full stack, the dream for some and joke for many. So what does it mean? It means that I'm going to talk about full stack, but at the same time, the title is catchy enough for someone to look into it. But it's not a clickbait title. It is relevant to the article. It is relevant to the things that I'm going to talk to my audience. At the same time, look into the cover image. It's talking about back end, front end, and there are two developers who are pointing fingers on each other and trying to say, hey, back end, hey, front end. So when you talk about full stack, we generally talk about front end and back end together. So that's the sense I was trying to bring into this cover image. It may not be perfect, but this works for me. And you know, with my experience, I can make out that it might work for my readers as well. Now, after cover and after title, you need to worry about one more important aspect. That's the subtitle or the meta description of your article. The one that you see over here, let me zoom in a bit for you. This is the one is called subtitle or the meta description. When you search something on Google, how does the search result look like, my friend? Here I have searched about promises and you see, it gives me a few articles about promises or search result. You can see like, where is it from? The title of it, then the date, and then there is a meta description, right? So this meta description is equally important as the title for your articles SEO because Google search engine is going to crawl through it and is going to figure out, oh, there is an article which is having this text in it and let me just pull it and show it to people, right? At the same time, when it is showed it to you, you don't want any of these pieces to get truncated. Do you like to click on a search result from Google which is truncated, whose text is truncated and things like that, you won't, right? So for the same reason, you don't want to produce something that may look like that. So whenever you have a title, you have a description, use a proper tool to make sure that's not going to get truncated. For that, I generally use this tool called Google ACRP Snippet Optimization Tool. It's a great tool where you can actually provide the title, the URL of your blog, and then the meta description and then test it out whether that's going to break or not. So let's test it out. The full stack versus full stack article that is in draft. I'm going to copy the title from here. I'm going to paste it over here. So you see, this looks good. So this is not going to get truncated. That's fine. Then I'm going to take the description and do the same thing. So I'll take the description from here and I'm going to put it over here. This looks good too. Great. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to take the URL even to make sure that the URL never gets cut, right? So for that, as my blog is on Hashnode, 
under settings i can get the url slug if your blog is on some other platform you can do the same thing as well so i have pasted the url over here you can see blog.greenrose.info you know after that this is the slug of it so far i was satisfied but i want to test it out in a little bit more right for example if you look into all these search results for example you have a date over here and the SERP what is giving you it doesn't have a date so you want to bring in date over here the moment you bring in date do you see what happened your description gets truncated so it means i can now tweak the description in such a way that in search results it still become optimized so let's do that the last line says let's take a look at some perception and correct i will just reword it like let's learn and correct them so now it fits fully so this is how you can make your blog post really really visible to everyone including google search engine so i hope that makes sense the last thing under things you want to care is about the formatting what does formatting means i think this is where bloggers or new technical bloggers go wrong they don't really pay a lot of attention on the formatting and i am going to take you through few examples through which you will learn about formatting and if you follow those you will feel that your article is really really coming alive right so let's see that when i talk about formatting it actually starts from here like how easily user can navigate through the content of your blog if they cannot navigate easily they lose interest and they exit as simple as that so you have to make sure that you do proper formatting of the text of the headings of the subheadings every bit and pieces that is relevant in your article if you don't do that you fail to present your article in front of your audience even it is a classic one and it's a very good one and it has a lot of potential so the one that i show you right now as an example it is a lengthy article and it has a lot of sections it has a lot of subsections but there are few key points that could be takeaways for you first thing i start with some introductory paragraphs and the starting is pretty important that's the hook that's why you have to grab the attention of your reader so that they would like to read further now you can start straight away you know bang on the subject perfectly fine i do that sometime but sometime if the article itself is going to be really longer and it needs some additional meat that's when you might want to tell some story give some insight do something curious in the beginning so that you know user will be glued to it after that i make sure that i have proper heading and as the title starts with already a h1 i generally starts my heading with h2 because if you consider this as an html page by right click and doing a view page source you have a h1 that is your title and then your first heading is your h2 so it means every heading that comes underneath i go as h3 h4 but one thing to keep in mind here that i never go beyond two levels of nesting maximum to maximum three levels of nesting if at all is required there are a couple of reasons for it because if i go too much nesting the table of content looks really really messed up it goes really really kind of inside and also when somebody read it it is very very difficult for them sometimes that when they are actually going in the rabbit hole and when they're actually coming out of your nesting so try to keep minimalistic nesting and that's when it is going to look really really awesome then the proper linking so if you're saying that you know go to this link what you exactly link in this particular sentence do you link go to or this link so the relevancy of your link where you put is also matter to your readers so for example create an account with casey using this link so this link should be linked to a particular link for creating account and that's why it can be more relevant right so things like that where do you want to bold where you don't want to bold where do you want to highlight things like this project is an option in the ui and you are showing a ui below so it means you have to highlight this one so either highlight it using the bold or highlight it with you know some kind of quote whatever you know you prefer then listing one is number listing another is bullet listing so wherever you want to convey things with pointers use bullet listing those circles but wherever you have finite set of items like one two three four this is how you should be doing one two and so on right so that also makes a lot of difference when people are reading about it when you are using images in your article make sure that images are having alt tag because in some cases if your images are not getting loaded your alt tag at least will be there also for the screen readers and all other accessibility factors is very much important in a section you might want to highlight something and that highlighting place usually i have seen people like they like to do bold you know 
they're bolding one paragraph itself or a part of a paragraph what i would suggest is like instead of that if something you want to highlight using this quotation would make more sense because once i am in this paragraph my eye straight away goes into this particular quotation and if you want to highlight or make some kind of informative information over there you can do it straight away so your reader read this very quickly and then they decide or, or make their mind whether I have to read this entire paragraph or not. And if at all you do this, that I like to do is at the end of it, I always leave my socials so that someone will reach out to me in case it's required or somebody is interested in me, they will connect with me. So you, if you have such section, it is always wise to separate it out with your from your rest of the article. That's where the divider is very helpful. So you can put a divider and then all your personal stuff, personalization stuff, you can put it at the end. So this is how you can think about formatting. Just don't keep writing, do mammoth para paragraphs and everything is kind of pushed together. Rather think like, how are you going to break this article content into smaller chunks and pieces? How are you going to put those pieces together to make a section? How are you going to name that section to give as a subheading? And how are you going to put those multiple subheading inside a heading? How are you going to highlight certain things that your reader attention will go there? This is how you make your content visible to your user once they come inside by seeing your cover and title. I hope it makes sense. Now we are done with the things that you want to care. Next, we want to dive into the things that you want to know and you don't want to miss that. As you started caring for your article, there are a few more things that you got to know to make it even better. The secret sauce of any article, I believe, is to keep it crisp and its paragraph as short as possible. In that matter, don't keep it like one-liner. It can be multi-liner, but it should not be really, really bigger. I'm giving you certain examples on the screen where the paragraphs are relatively smaller, it conveys what it has to convey, and then logically breaks and go to the next one. So I have seen articles where people write paragraphs which are like an article itself is so, so big. You got to break it down. You got to break it down into smaller chunks. And that is when the pleasing of reading will come from your reader. Second, reduce nonsense. In a sense that if you if you're writing a tutorial, for example, you want to tell step by step thing or you're writing a listicles where you say top 10 things, top five things and things like that. You want to get into business. Now, it might be a contrary, right? Sometime back, I told you want to start with some kind of story and things like that. And again, I'm talking about you want to get into business. It's only mean is that that your story should not be so long that it takes so much time for you to get into business. You have to get into business and for that you need to set some stage you know in the beginning but but building that stage should be as minimalistic as possible so that readers can flawlessly get into the subject that you are talking about so what will happen like the more you write and more you do review re-review and things like that before you publish you will often cut short those items it's just like video editing you know before you go live we'll just cut the things that probably not essential for the video at all or maybe it is too much similarly with the writing as well you can cut down similarly with your code as well right when you write code you do refactoring so similarly the refactoring is essential that you need to know it is always good to give some kind of conclusion or the summary at the end but make sure that conclusion and the summary should not be an article itself it's called summary and you have spoken enough in your article the summary should be just a revisited points and the pointers that somebody can just quickly go through. Now, if you see in, on the screen, for this mammoth big article, the summary is of just three bullet points. That's what, right? And then when you are just ending, this is purely optional, but I have seen it works a lot for me, is like end with a curiosity. By curiosity, something like that, task for you. You are writing some article, you have explained a lot of stuff, and then you are leaving something for your readers or for, for your users to do. That brings engagement. And I have seen that some of the folks might even come back and start saying that, hey, they have done it or while doing that, they have an issue and that builds a connection with your reader and that connection is quite long lasting, right? So this is really helpful task for you. You can always give or, or some kind of curious thing like what next you are planning, what you want to bring in, all these things, you know, you can always put to get that curiosity going. So these are the things that you need to know apart from the fact that you want to cure. And the last thing, that I'm going to t talk about and end this particular video is with the things that you want to do. For technology bloggers, the variety or the type of articles they write usually limited. Either they write step-by-step -step tutorials, they, like, they write listicles, they write case studies, they write a review of the product. These are the things basically they keep doing, right? So in this limited number of set, each of this article demands a different kind of formatting and outlook. 
So for example, if you are writing a tutorial, which is like step by step tutorial, you have to make sure that for each of the step you provide adequate screenshot if it is relevant. And then the code snippet that actually making that happen. Here is an example. So there are plenty, plenty of screenshots. And then again, the code example from the code example, what is the outcome that particular thing screenshot because never ever overestimate or underestimate your target audience. There could be somebody who is just beginner want to know each of this step want to follow each of this step and they are going to appreciate you. There are people who might already know they will skip. It's fine. But right for always most of the mass that will really really like to go through each of these pieces right so make sure you do that second very vital point if you're writing a step-by-step -step tutorial after putting all the steps perform it by yourself many times it happened that you know i was quite convinced that after giving this command this will be the output or this is how the things will work so just go and publish it but what happened while following that some of the readers will find that certain things are missing maybe a, a very simple step of installing a dependency got missed and because of that things are not working now they might figure out that it is missing but still they won't be shy of commenting on your article that you have missed it right you don't want that you know these are all obvious errors that you should be catching at your end so the best thing would be you perform the task that you have written in an article and then only you publish or then only you submit and this is very much important if you are doing a paid article because people are paying you for writing articles so make sure that those are really really good and those are really really having all information that nobody is going to suffer with putting a code snippet on your step-by-step -step tutorial is good but it's not enough you also need to explain those code snippet the way that you understand them so for example the snippet that you see over here and then there will be an explanation just below it saying that what exactly this piece of code doing some people may understand just by looking into this code but some people need explanation so make sure you do that all right now this is controversial i have seen many people put screenshot of a code instead of the code itself i kind of don't like that neither i don't like reading those article because it is hard for me to make use of that code maybe the intention here is like someone will write the code seeing the screenshot but that's defeat the purpose for me somebody is looking into my article and they want to get started as soon as possible so i want to give all the flexibility to them so that they can copy paste the code and they want to make use of them my suggestion would be to you to always use the proper code block that your blog editor supports you can give screenshot but even if you give screenshot make sure there is a way that people can get your code maybe a github link or something like that that people can actually get your code from right so that's very important last but not the least when you are writing listicles like this you know 10 tricks five that thing seven these things always go by the number that you are mentioning i have seen things also have done this in past like i'm telling five html tags but at the end of it i have written eight html tags inside it okay so that's 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 cool but it's not that great you know and at the same time you provide adequate references so when you're writing listicles the purpose is not to make a very lengthy article it's about talking about those 10 things maybe give some kind of screenshots give some kind of you know animated stuff explain the things but at the same time just provide a link from where people can read more about it know more about it. listicles are always about the entry point and from there people want to learn in depth so you are giving them the opportunity to do so i hope it makes sense to you like the things that you want to do as well so let me ask back again do you want to write blog that most of the people would like to read if the answer is yes and you learn something from this particular video please like and share and subscribe to this channel if you still not convinced that you want to write blog and developers should get started and can start with blogging i'm perfectly fine with that at least after listening to me you would appreciate the effort and time a developer takes to share their learning with other developers through a medium like blogging i i know that you will appreciate that after that all right so stay well guys and stay healthy I'll come back again with another video on content creation very soon. I'm going to see you on my channel. So please subscribe so that you don't miss out any videos from me in future. Thank you very much.